Hey, Miles here at Tackle Hive, and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about ear protection from budget options all the way to custom ear pro. So, if you're interested in learning about them, stay tuned. When it comes to two pieces of equipment when you are getting into firearms, I highly recommend that you invest a lot in your eye protection and ear protection. And in this video, we're talking about ear protection. Often you're going to you know, hear other people talk that, oh, you don't really need expensive ear protection. You can just get by with budget ear protection. And there's a time and a place for budget ear protection. Does it mean you also have to invest in something really expensive like custom ear pro no you don't but what i want to do is share the common options that you have out there starting from low end all the way up talk about some of the pros and cons and why you might want to upgrade and then i'll share my overall experiences and kind of what my go-to is these days and you know if i would buy or use any other options other than what i'm using today so let's start off on the low end here this is very affordable, very cheap. You can get foamies, these foam inserts for, I mean, a bunch of them. They come in bundles for maybe a couple of dollars. And if you're first starting going to a shooting range, you probably are going to be given a pair of foamies because they're really cheap, right? This is something that they can give every new shooter who's learning. And you might double it up with earmuffs, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But this is something that is common everywhere. And this is something that can be really clutch, meaning you might forget your ear pro, um, it's at back at home and you're at a range, but then it's like, oh, what am I gonna do? They're probably gonna have some foamies here. This is going to provide you a level of protection. It's not the best, but it's gonna provide you a level of protection that will save you from damaging your ears if you're just gonna be exposed to shooting for a short period of time, um, you're not really gonna be trained the whole day, and perhaps maybe even you're an outdoor, an outdoor range versus an indoor range. If you're an indoor range, this will help you, but it's, it's not going to provide a lot of protection. So foamies, though, are the beginning of everything here where you can, as I alluded to, bundle this up or combine it for more hearing protection with traditional earmuffs. And that is the next step. So after these foamies here, which are really easy to use, the next option are earmuffs. And there are lots of different brands out there okay so there, i'm not going to dive into every single option out there every single brand because there's so many right? all you have to do is do a quick google search and you're going to find different options but what i want to talk about is that there are two main offerings when it comes to earmuffs okay so earmuffs clearly are you're going to put them over your head cover your ears and you're going to, you're going to have regular earmuffs which are not electronic and electronic earmuffs okay so not if it's not electronic you're probably going to be able to get earmuffs that are running from um, these are just ranges from 30 to maybe 70 80 dollars for ones that provide no electronic hearing or any features like that right this is something that people often double up with foamies as i talked about you can also use this based on the decibel protection, the hearing protection, what the rating is. Generally, the higher, the better. And that's also going to be reflected in the cost. So a $30 earmuff is not going to be the same as one that might be $70 or $80. Even if they're both not electronic and they look exactly the same, the more expensive one is going to be better off for you in terms of uh, protecting your hearing. So earmuffs are a great option, particularly ones that are not electronic. If you're just getting started and you want more ear protection to double up with foamies, and sometimes people find this more comfortable rather than putting something in their ear, like, a, like an insert or a foamy. So I did mention that there's electronic versions too, and I'm going to discuss the difference here. So with these standard earmuffs, you're going to have good ear protection, but you can't take in any other sound. And it might be hard for you to hear other people talking to you. Let's say if you're in a training class. If you are training alone and you don't really need to hear anyone else, then maybe these standard earmuffs are going to be good. But a lot of people who start to dive into shooting more, spend a lot more time shooting, go to a lot more classes, they're going to invest in some kind of electronic ear pro. And what electronic ear pro does is that it is going to block out the loud noises, the, the gunshots, but it's going to allow you to hear conversation. So you get the best of both worlds. 
And this way, when you're in a class, you're not constantly taking your ear muffs on and off to listen to an instructor. And that can also lead to sometimes where you might be listening to an instructor, not realizing that it's live fire again, you break shots and you don't have your ear pro on because you have to put it on and off. This is going to alleviate that problem because again, you just keep it on and you can turn it on and off and just kind of leave it as is. When it comes to both earmuffs though, there's two things that I want to talk about here. Probably the most important thing when it comes to earmuffs is to ensure that you have a good seal around your ear. And the cheaper the ear pro is, the seal provided probably isn't going to provide really good protection or it's going to allow sound to come in. Now bear with me because I'm going to talk about something that people may not really consider that much. And for example, if you're shooting once in a while and you put this ear pro on, you're wearing eye pro, that eye pro, okay, that the actual um, eye protection or glasses can disrupt the seal. So because your ears are covered even partially or maybe let's say 95%, when you go to a shooting range and you hear shots, you might think, okay, this is good protection because it's not, I don't really hear a sting, it's not hurting my ears. And that's okay temporarily, but if you have that seal broken, you might not be aware that over time, if you keep on using the same ear pro without a good seal, over time your hearing is going to be affected because the, the, the shots are actually, they're muffled, but they're not providing 100% protection. So you need to make sure that the seals are really good here. And there are gel seals, for example. This seal is a little bit better than this one there. Um, this is not the gel pad, but the gel pads are going to allow the pad to contour, just kind of really, really wrap around your ear protection or say your eye protection better so that it forms a 100% seal. So when you are buying earmuffs, the cost the differences between, let's say, two, even though they might look exactly the same, and the hearing protection, the gray, the decibel rating might be the same, you might be wondering, why is one more expensive? It might be the seal. It might be the padding here. So that's something to really look into and consider. The next thing is the decibel rating. A lot of people think that, oh, this is fine. Again, the whole idea of I'm at a range, I'm hearing shots, I'm right next to somebody who's shooting, and I, my ears aren't bothered. You might not be bothered right now, but again, long-term damage could be happening if there isn't really enough high of a decibel rating enough that's going to protect your ear, your hearing. So if two pieces of earmuffs exactly alike, one of them is double the price, it's probably the, the rating, the decibel rating. So my, my recommendation is that, as I alluded to earlier, you really want to invest in protecting your hearing because it's something that a lot of people take for granted and then as they shoot a lot, all of a sudden they get tinnitus and they have hearing issues. Avoid that by just investing an extra $50, $100 in your ear protection to get the higher decibel rating. One last thing about earmuffs, I talked about how your traditional earmuffs range probably, a fair range probably like 30 to $70, $80. Electronic ear pro, a lot of different options out there as well. but. Um, I would say that I've seen options run from about $70 all the way up to, for earmuffs, uh, about, if I remember correctly, about $350, maybe max $400. But the ones that are on the higher end, and they can go much, much higher, okay? I'm just talking more for consumer levels here. Obviously, for the military, LE, it can get much, much higher. But even for consumer levels that are usually at that range, the, you know, the $400 range, they might have feature sets that you don't really need where there might be comms that are added into the ear protection so that you can talk to teammates and doing exercise and things like that. Your normal, your average shooter is just probably not going to need that. So things to consider, even though some electronic ear pro options might be expensive, look at the feature set. You might not need all of that. The most important things, as I mentioned, are the decibel rating as well as the, the pad here, the sealant, in terms of your hearing protection. Of course, there's going to be other features there. Maybe there's adjustable volume, while other ear pro or ear muffs might only have three volume settings. So look into that stuff and find the one that you like best. Now, moving down the line, there might come a time where you want to invest in earplugs or ear inserts. And that might be because of a few things. One is if you're shooting a rifle, these earmuffs, notice how big they are, they can get in the way when you are mounting that rifle on your shoulder 
what stock is here it could literally get in the way so physically you might not be able to shoot properly with earmuffs because you're constantly knocking them off of position and that's not going to provide good ear protection so in terms of physical limitations that might be when you're going to upgrade into Ear, ear plugs or inserts, whether they be regular foamies, uh, non-electronic, but what I have here moving up are the electronic versions, okay? And there are lots of different kinds as well. Another reason why you might want to move to ear inserts or earplugs is because it just provides more freedom, okay? It, it, you're, you're, things are not going to get away even when you're running, there, there's less chance of any kind of shifting that might bother you, and that is a valid reason too. Personally, I use ear inserts and earplugs, specifically because, and this is really the main reason why I originally moved, is that uh, it might not look like it, but I have what's known as cauliflower ears. So I used to grapple a lot, compete a lot, fight a lot, and my ears, they don't bend. They are literally rock hard. So if you touch this, you're going to feel, it literally feels like cement. So imagine putting this on and my ears don't really bend, so it's painful. And that's specifically why. But after that, I, I mean, I wouldn't go back even if I could to earmuffs because it just provides a lot more freedom. So here I have an example. Again, lots of different brands here. But this just so happens to be, I've, lot, I've tried a lot of earplugs. This just so happens to be um, the best ones that I've used. They're the 3M Peltors, and I'll leave a link below. Uh, we're not endorsed by them or anything like that. or we're, we, we're not paid or anything to endorse them. And I like these because... Out of all of the earplugs that I've used, they are kind of, they're a step up from earmuffs, but they are probably the best in terms of quality, ease of use, and adjustability. The only downside with uh, these earplugs is that uh, the battery life only lasts about uh, half a day. And there are different ways that you can manage the, the battery life, but if you're just using full, sound, full, you know, uh, full volume, half a day. So that might be something, something you consider, especially if you're doing full days of training, things like that. Now, a lot of the electronic ear plug options will come with a carrying case that you can charge as well, just like this. So this is a charging case. So maybe in between rounds when you're jamming mags, you can charge it. And that's another way to get around it. But I, I do like ear plugs. I do recommend them for people who are really moving a lot and are serious shooters. With these ear plugs, you can usually use some kind of retention device, a rope, or some, it's not really a rope, but a plastic straight cord or something like that, attach both, that attach to both earplugs so that if for some reason it falls off, you're gonna, they're gonna come around your neck so you don't lose them. Um, or you can use them as I do, just like this, without any, um, any kind of uh, cord holding them in place. And I find that's more about a matter of fitting. So a lot of the options are going to include different size earplugs so that you can conform them and fit them securely to your ear. And I've noticed that if I find the right earplug, I don't really need any other retention device because it just doesn't come off. In terms of pricing, electronic earplugs, they probably, I think I've seen options start for about 150 to this, if I remember correctly, is now running for about, I've seen it selling on Amazon for about 699. So it definitely is much more expensive. So you just have to factor a lot of things though, okay? So I've, I've tried the, the cheaper electronic ear pro and they're just not as good. The quality of the sound, the noise cancellation, all of that stuff, it can be very clunky where this is very streamlined. So you're going to, if, with a lot of ear protection, you're going to really get what you pay for. Do I recommend everyone invest in this? It really just depends on you know, what, you're, what you're looking for, how you shoot, and if you really want maximum ear protection. Sometimes if you're shooting indoors, you may need to double up as well. It just kind of depends on the setting and like the caliber of the guns you're shooting. Now, if you are a very serious shooter, you're a competitor, maybe shooting is your profession, your career, this is where you might want to look into and invest into custom inserts. They're like electronic earplugs, but on steroids. There's a lot more customization, a lot more hearing programs. They're just, they just perform overall so much better and they're custom molded to your ear, so they're really not going to come out. A lot of people ask me about the ear protection that I use, and I do use custom inserts, and there's a lot of different places that you can get them from. I recommend going to directly to an audiologist or an ENT, an you know, ear doctor, and what they're going to do is they're going to take molds, they're going to ask you what you're using it for, all that stuff, and then take care of it, and you're going to have your custom inserts. The beauty of that is if you, there's a lot of options out there, but the beauty of going direct is that if you go through a brand who normally just works with an audiologist, 
then they're usually just the middleman and they're going to mark up the pricing. So if you are interested in diving down that route, you know, that looking into custom inserts, then go direct. Ever since I went the custom route, I, I'll never really go back. Now I have all these options as a backup, particularly the 3M Peltors. I have actually three pairs of these in my bag. Um, the reason being is I told you they last about half a day and sometimes I just like to swap them out um, because I'm busy at the range. But I like my custom inserts because there's a lot of different hearing programs that you can get input into the device. For example, training hearing programs, competition hearing programs, if you're in at an indoor range. And what that does is it's going to change the, the tuning of this or the, the settings of your hearing device so that it's better suited for your environment. And one other plus about uh, custom inserts, depending on the features, the models that you get, things like, or I should say the feature set that you get, and I guess the, the cost as well, you can really treat these as hearing devices and amplifying your hearing. And this was something, this was more of a surprise for me. I didn't really realize it did this, but I can hear people whispering it at the loudest volume. I can hear people whispering about anything and sometimes about 50 yards and they don't realize I can hear everything. You know, they're, they're not talking about it, but I can literally hear everything. So that's a pretty cool thing. It's like a superpower. So pricing, when it comes to custom inserts, remember the feature sets, whether you're on Bluetooth, number of hearing programs, all that, it's really going to depend. But I have seen options starting at about $1,000 all the way to about five to $6,000. So it is a wide range, but the best thing to do is if you're interested, know that minimum, at the very minimum, you're gonna spend a thousand, uh, maximum, you know, five, 6,000, just gonna depend, but know that going in. So if you are interested, I would probably cut it in the middle. You're probably going to pay uh, you know, about $3,000 for it. Before I give you my overall take on where budget, middle of the road, and really expensive ear protection come into play, I did want to talk about the electronic options just quickly here. Just know that depending on the electronic option you have, you can have a dial that allows you to adjust volume gradually. Just kind of, there's no set settings. Whereas, for example, this one here, the 3M Peltor, even though this is uh, one of the more expensive options out there, I believe this one only has three volume settings, so like a low, medium, and high. But keep that in mind. Custom is usually going to be a dial as well, so you can dial it in in very small increments or dial it up in, in small increments. So what should you get? Budget options, middle of the road, or something really expensive. I already mentioned you really should take care of your hearing, so I would get the most expensive ear protection that you can get that has really a good high grade decibel rating as well as the feature set that you want. It will come down to what you're using it for and how often you shoot. This, there's a time and place for these, like just not electronic and for foamies, particularly if you're a casual shooter. If you're just going to the range once in a while, this might just be all you need. For those of us who shoot a lot, this, these are backup items where we might forget all this stuff and this will still work. This will allow us to get to the range, to talk to people, do all that stuff and protect our ears. Of course, the middle of the road, Electronic Ear Pro or, uh, can do that as well. So if you didn't do this, if you have this as your backup, that works. I would invest in plugs or inserts because it allows you to do everything that you want to. You're not going to have an earmuff in your way if you want to do right full and you just have more mobility, freedom of movement. Of course, I don't know what you're going to be shooting. Maybe you're strictly just pistol and you don't have to worry about this for rifles, so on and so forth, but those are things you need to consider. If you can, and again, this is not for everybody, but after using custom inserts, if you can afford these, they are so much better than all these options combined. I mean, by far. Clearly, this is not like expensive earmuff uh, options where you can talk to your team members using communications devices. This is strictly for hearing protection. But if you can afford it, definitely get it because it, it really is a great product. So there you guys have it. A little talk about budget options to the more expensive custom options out there. Of course, there's the middle of the road options that most people use. And the right choice for you is going to depend on, again, how often you're shooting, where you're shooting, but definitely try to get the highest level rating that you can here in protection. And if you can afford custom, go for custom. It's just gonna be a world of difference. So I hope you guys like this video. We'd love to hear your take on hearing protection, like what works best for you. Um, have you had problems with different options out there? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.